Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Lise Bedeau. New for you at noon, a prisoner is back in jail after escaping earlier this morning in Dilworth. Police say 24-year-old Levi Hansen was arrested for a felony warrant for escape. Dilworth police stopped Hansen on a traffic stop shortly before 8 a.m. and found he had warrants out for his arrest. Police say Hansen had a cat with him and they stopped at the station to drop that pet off. Hansen then manipulated the back door lock from inside the squad car and ran off. Officers managed to locate him and arrest Hansen about 20 minutes later. Hansen was originally being held at the center, a rehab clinic, where he had been sentenced in June. It's another windy afternoon out there. You can see the sky cam shaking. When will it calm down? Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Yeah, those uh, winds are going to be uh, kicking up for much of the rest of the afternoon and on into the evening hours, and uh, we will finally get a break beginning later on tonight. Winds gusting right now here in the Fargo-Moorhead area at 40 miles per hour, 41 miles an hour up in Grand Forks, 35 mile an hour gusts over in Jamestown. Again, it's going to be a windy day, but fairly warm, at least for most of us. Still hanging on to some 60s with some cloud cover up in northern Minnesota elsewhere. Some 70s, and we're going to see even some low 80s as we head through the afternoon and evening hours. There are the clouds up in northern Minnesota. They'll continue to slide off towards the east, and we'll see some sunny skies making their way up into even the uh, Roseau, Bedette, War Road areas in the next hour or two. On the radar, underneath those clouds, no precipitation, but can't rule out an isolated sprinkle or two up in uh, far northern Minnesota over the next hour or two before those clouds get on out of here. Wind advisory continues for most of us. A few counties off to the south have been trimmed away. You could see winds gusting as high as 50 miles per hour. Going to show you the first two days of that seven-day forecast. Today, windy. We did have some rain off towards the north earlier this morning. Low 80s. Tomorrow, less wind and a lot of sunshine. Temperatures in the mid-80s. And again, a slight chance for a, a small shower up in northern Minnesota. The rest of the uh, forecast, including a look at your weekend, we'll show you that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. Cleanup is underway this afternoon after high winds did some damage overnight. A lot of people in Jamestown lost power right around 10 last night when a transformer blew at a city substation. It was back on around midnight. The high winds also pushed a big tree onto two parked cars, downed a number of power lines, and snapped a power pole. Luckily, no one was hurt. Police say a man tried to trick them into responding to a different part of town so he could hide after running from a traffic stop. Police say someone called 911, reporting a shooting at the Northside Royal Liquors. Then another call came in about a shooting at the South Store location. Police determined nothing happened at either location, and they tracked the 911 call. The ping led them to Tayan Walker. He was stopped around 8 last night for driving a stolen car and ran from police. Officers say Walker admitted to making the fake 911 calls as a diversion so police wouldn't find him. Now, coming up on Valley News Live tonight, Nicole Johnson looks into how often fake 911 calls happen and the consequences that emergency responders have to deal with because of them. Protests are planned for outside the office of a Twin Cities dentist this afternoon. Dr. Walter J. Palmer is the target of international outrage after he killed a beloved lion in Zimbabwe. He says he didn't know it was a local favorite and he believed everything about the hunt was legal. Protests are planned later today in Bloomington and a makeshift memorial for Cecil is slowly growing outside of Palmer's office. Cecil the lion was a tourist favorite at a Zimbabwe National Park known for his black mane. Two Zimbabwe men have also been arrested for allegedly helping Palmer. The FAA is investigating an Allegiant Airlines pilot who declared a fuel emergency and had to land at Fargo's Hector International Airport during a practice session for the Blue Angels last week. The airport was closed at the time, but the pilot was arguing with air traffic controllers that he didn't have enough fuel to divert the plane. Hector officials say it notified airlines of the planned airspace closure as far back as December. The FAA said Allegiant 426 was an hour late departing from Las Vegas and missed its scheduled landing time. A New Hope, Minnesota special education teacher accused of having sex with a student has been charged with two counts of criminal sexual conduct. Police say a 16-year-old girl told authorities that 47-year-old David Henderson, who is a teacher at her school, took her to his home in Rogers on July 22nd, where they watched movies. The teen says she fell asleep on the couch and woke up to find Henderson on top of her. The girl told police she was 13 weeks pregnant. A search of Henderson's home found a positive pregnancy test in Henderson's bedroom with the girl's name on it. 
Henderson admitted that the girl slept over but denies having sex with her and said he held on to the girl's pregnancy test because he was helping her. Bison fans could be getting the thumbs up on buying alcohol at home games and plan on keeping it where you bought it. The Fargo Dome Authority last night approved the idea of a beer garden. But the catch is, alcohol won't be allowed, will only be allowed in suites, not in the stands or outside of that beer garden area. The approval came down to fairness for all fans, despite a desire to keep it a more family-friendly atmosphere. Now, the policy still must be approved by NDSU, the chancellor of the North Dakota University System, and the city of Fargo. We have a follow-up now on a story we told you about earlier this week about allegations of neglect and abuse at Golden Living Center in Moorhead. A presumed infection kept us out of the facility on Monday to talk with a complainant. And now the nursing home says it has six confirmed cases of H. influenza type A. We've also heard from dozens of viewers about issues at that facility. But one resident, Elizabeth Garcia, who has lived there for six years, says it's been nothing short of wonderful for her. One of the new North Dakota laws taking hold August 1st deals with the sale of electronic cigarettes. Not only will it be against the law to sell e-cigarettes and all of the associated products to minors, but they can no longer be on display for anyone to pick up. A survey showed that e-cigarette use among North Dakota teens skyrocketed in 2014. A delicious opportunity is being served up right here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. School supplies could earn you free pizza. Uncle Matios has teamed up with the United Way of Cass Clay to help with the school supply drive. All you have to do is bring in a donation, and in return, you get a coupon for a free 9-inch pizza. Uncle Matios' owners say they are always looking for ways to give back to the community. If you don't have time for pizza, bring donations to the store, and you will get a pizza card to enjoy at the pizza place at a later date.